In the last week, I've made leaps and bounds with my analysis. I find that whenever I'm wrong, it always leads to better analysis because I take being wrong as a sign that I need to improve. But during the time that I'm actually trading and observing the, the patterns, I actually get better. All right? And then I go back and I apply it to different charts that I haven't looked at for a while. And, and I start to see things that before I couldn't see. And, you know, that just means that simply put that, you know, I'm getting better at understanding five wave moves and zigzags even more. And I think that's the key. The key here is to understand those two patterns and all the different ways that they can evolve because that's all the market ever makes, right? As, as I mentioned in my last, uh, in the first episode of this show. So I'm always careful, you know, not to, you know, let one chart affect another. You know, you always got to look at every chart individually. You know, I don't just um, look at all the different charts and try to, you know, put them together and, you know, wrap them up in a, with a nice little bow on top to make myself feel happy. And it, it's not how it works really, right? I need to know exactly what's happening with each market based on the pattern. And that will lead me to be able to make better ideas, post better ideas, um, and also um, be able to understand which one's going to perform in which way versus the other. Okay. So more recently, my analysis on the Dow Jones has become a strong point. And it's become, it's always been like a pretty good gauge for me as to, you know, where we are in the whole, you know, economic system, you know, which stage it's in, all right? And the way that this pattern since the Great Depression has evolved, for me, I think that the whole thing is a bubble of epic proportions, right? Since the Fed was created, it's literally created one of the biggest bubbles that probably mankind will ever see up until this point. And it still hasn't finished yet, right? It's the biggest type two expanded zigzag that, you know, you could ever imagine. And it's all because of, you know, money printing and manipulation. Now, whether or not that's a good thing um, or not, that's completely up to you to decide. I really don't care about that sort of thing. For me, it's just about tracking where we are in the whole process. So at the moment, it's become pretty clear that, you know, the, the correction since 2000, which includes the GFC, you know, is uh, not over yet. And the only thing that's ending now is wave D of, you know, that that pattern, right, that correction. So it's part of a larger wave D and the wave D within the wave D is expanded. So what that means is during the 90s, we had a run up all the way to 2000, which was the first part of a zigzag, right, since 87 crash. And then since 2000, we had an A down which was you know like the dot-com bust and you know during 9-11 and then we had the subsequent bounce which led to the gfc so that run up which was like what we're seeing today since the 2009 it's a similar thing that made a run up to 2007 you know 2008 and then 2009 we had uh the wave c down and since the, that 2009 low, we, we've we made this wave D up, which I believe is now completing. So I think all we need to do is see one more all-time high, and then it's done. Okay, so the bear market, even though, you know, it seems like it started, you know, over a year ago, I, I don't think that that really was the start of the bear market. I think that that's just still correcting the move up since March 2020. So I think that what we're seeing now is the final stages of that wave D, which is almost done. So this leads me to believe that Bitcoin, it won't really see an all-time high in this particular run-up that we're going to see in the Dow Jones. And it's it's been pretty obvious to myself that the Dow Jones always tops after Bitcoin does in certain moves, right? And I think this is going to be one of them. I think that um, what we're seeing now is simply put another wave D in Bitcoin, right? And I've been saying it for a little while now, uh, well, since this week especially, that basically it's almost done. And I think it's going to turn down shortly and it's going to top out way before the Dow Jones. 
and it's going to start producing the first couple of waves that's going to lead into its crash that's going to take it down to about look anywhere between around 5 4000 uh actually 4000 is the is where i don't think it will go below so maybe 5 6000 so in saying that um I back up these claims with my recent XLM and XRP analysis, where it suggests that those are going to crash down to almost where they started from. Uh, and then once that happens, we're going to see the next bull market. So I think that these things are going to happen at the same time. Uh, I think Bitcoin and XRP, XLM, they're all going to bottom at the same time or thereabouts. Um, but, they're not going to make all-time highs when the Dow Jones does. Dow Jones does, right? And and I think that that's important to note, especially because more recently um, there's been a lot of mania in the news, a lot of uh, reports of a lot of bullishness, and I think that that's unfounded. The, the waves don't really suggest that that's going to happen just yet. And one example is uh, one I saw recently on TradingView, which is former Coinbase chief technical officer makes $2 million bet that Bitcoin will hit $1 million by June 17. So that right there to me is almost ludicrous, peak mania, ridiculous type of uh, thinking. And it's just really find the sky type thing at this point. You know, I don't think it's possible. Um, and I think that those types of things are just sentiment readings. For me, uh, I, I take a contrarian you know, approach to looking at those things. And I, and I think that, um, you know, it's a sign that, you know, ba basically Bitcoin's done for now. Uh, so during my, during the week and, you know, since the, the first episode last week on, you know, this show, you know, a lot has changed. So this is what I'm trying to explain to you right now with this, with this whole thing. So I think that it, it's a terrible time to be making uh, bullish decisions, especially when we're so close to a top. And I think that the banking crisis is just a symptom. I think the overall psychology of the market is the most important thing. And, and that psychology to me is in the waves. And it's basically just saying, look, uh, the Fed has done what it can up until now. And I think it's trying to reload the chamber for stimulus by raising rates, and I think it will continue raising rates right into that high that's coming probably over the next few months, All right? And I think the only time they'll stop and pause is when really they, the market's in free fall. So therefore, what's the what? Why would they continue to raise when there's there's obviously cracks showing now, and the market will break during that time. And that's fine because I think that by the time that the market does bottom out that they'll need a tool to stimulate so then once again the bailouts will happen which they don't call them that these days they don't want to call it don't call it a bailout right but really it's pretty obvious that that's what they're going to have to do in order for the next bull market to begin so my only concern with that is that you know they're definitely going to continue raising rates um at a certain point in time once there's a recovery and then what's going to happen in my opinion is that they're going to continue to raise into the following bull market, which is then going to crash even harder. So uh, what I think is going to happen to the markets over the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years is that they're going to continue this game of up and down markets and raising is the preferred method to try and, keep inflation under control now to me that's that's a fool's game because what they're doing is literally just trying to put a band-aid on a broken leg right all they keep doing is printing more money to fix the problem which is printing more money right so inflation is a result of money printing right and then they want to fix the money printing problem which they created with more money printing. So it's like putting two band-aids over a broken leg. And then how many times are they going to do this before the market actually whipsaws into the top of this pattern that we're currently in and we see the mother of all crashes completely fall apart? You know, the market completely falls apart. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen over the next 
few cycles. And I think that each time uh, we're going to see cryptos and Bitcoin inch higher by a very large margin uh, whilst they continue to, you know, crash in this Ponzi type scheme falling apart right in front of us. And it's going to be amazing to trade this because of the ups and downs, the volatility that it's going to cause over long periods of time is going to uh, really uh, be a trader's market rather than a, a buy and hold market like it has been for so long. And that, in my opinion, is because we've, we're seeing the the really expanded zigzags all start to complete their moves over the next you know few decades. And I think that that's what's going to lead to this roller coaster ride in the markets. Um, and obviously, people are trying to get away from that whole mentality of printing money to stimulate the markets to to continue this whole Ponzi scheme going forward. And I think that the new system will eventually be one that is, uh, you know, decentralized. Not, you know, you can't manipulate it. You can't just print more of it. It's, uh, it's going to be something with a bit more substance and integrity, right? Because the current system right now is a bloody joke. Uh, it's, it's going to be continuing to crash and recover, crash and recover, crash and recover. And that's obviously going to be a sign that the markets are tired, system's not working, and eventually it'll crash, right? My analysis suggests that it's going to crash harder than anything you've ever seen before. Uh, especially with the amount of debt that they're gonna that's gonna continue to pile up, it's definitely gonna reach the end. Okay, so that's my view on this one for, for this round. Uh, and now a word from our sponsor. RS Wave is proud to be sponsored by Fairdesk. They offer low trading fees, you can get an extra five percent bonus on deposit up to six hundred dollars and they offer up to 125x leverage for your crypto trading needs. Now, this week's winner of the $500 worth of USDT bonus, it's a trading bonus for Fairdesk, is Invino Veritas. So congratulations, Invino. Um, I've seen you around a few times on the channel. So I just also want to mention that you need to deposit 100,000, sorry, 1,000 USDT uh, in order to qualify to use the bonus. So um, yeah, just be aware of that. And for once again this week, if you want to uh, go into the draw to win 500 uh, USDT to you know to use as a bonus to trade on Fairdesk, then just leave a comment below and i'll just randomly choose one i'm using uh, a random number generator to do this so uh in vino if you want to contact me via the website uh, we can uh, arrange that for you rswave.com all right we're back again so what i want to talk about now for round two is how the dow jones is going to perform against cryptos or how cryptos is going to perform against the Dow Jones rather, because what I think is happening here is that the current system is in the throes of basically dying. So what I think is going to happen after this next crash is going to be a series of five wave moves, right? This is basically going to be the market uh, basically producing its death knell which means that five waves going to go down from here after we hit that, you know, Dow Jones high, we're going to see five waves down. And then the next bull market is going to be five waves up. And then the next crash after that, it's going to be five waves down, five waves up, five waves down, five waves up, right? It's actually going to be insane. Like what I see coming is going to be crazy. So the Dow Jones, although it's going to be making these five waves up, five waves down, it's actually not going to make much progress in terms of how high it goes. Like those swings might get larger over time, but they're actually going to be just producing barely a new high every time before the whole thing implodes. Okay. That's what my analysis is telling me, right? They're just simple patterns expanded. So for me, it's, it's kind of like telling me that um, what cryptos will eventually do is be 
less like sorry be more immune to those swings right so whereas now we're looking at cryptos as as in they're so volatile i think that the dow jones will become more volatile and cryptos will become less volatile in terms of price action and i think it's because they will become more stable over time as more people get on board with you know what could be the new system right the iso coins bitcoin you know uh i'm not too i'm i'm not much of a big fan of ethereum i think that um moving to proof of stake basically makes it a security uh passing the howie test all that sort of thing is just like Fair enough. Uh, and also it's overpriced gas fees. I mean, that's just unnecessary expenses there for a system, which has probably spawned more than half these bloody scam coins in the first place. Anyway, you know, it's like you're, you're piggybacking on the back of uh, a project to make money. Right. And I think a lot of these projects have just piggybacked on the back of Bitcoin to make money. And fair enough, you know, it's a crypto revolution, you know, a blockchain revolution or whatever, right? Decentralized revolution. But the thing is that um, a lot of people have just jumped on the, you know, on the wave. So it's it's not really an innovation. It's just uh, trying to make money off the back of a, a new technology or at least the hype over a new technology at this point. 